Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hello. Thank you for coming on. Hello, hello, hello. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for coming on today. I am here to do a, not going to say it's going to be a quick live, because usually that's what we always say. We always say I'm going to be really short, but a lot of times we, <laughs> that's not really the case. <laughs> But blessings, thank you for coming on. Just coming on, um, like I said, I'm not going to say I'm, I'm not going to be long. Bless you. Thank you for coming on. I just wanted to do some sharing as usual, only when the Lord leads me to come on. Um, just whatever the Lord just placed on my heart at the time, that's what I come on to do. Um, at first, I was doing a uh, continuous, you know, continuing to do a Wednesday um, teaching. But, you know, like I said, I just come on when the Lord leads me come on and um and so just wanted to come on and share a little today and i'm actually going to come out of um experience i always share some of my experiences along with scripture and how the lord truly um how he leads me and um i really love this area that the lord has led me in over the years and kind of just giving um the body of christ a little you know, revelation in this particular area and not saying that there's other leaders that do not speak in this area because they do um, talk on this in this area, but it's not so many that really expound in this particular um, vein. And that's about governing, being able to govern um, what God has given us, whether it is a ministry whether it is a business, whether it is just our, our homes and um and um, over a region, over a city, um, these are the things that the Lord really um, has given us, whatever he has given us um, to govern and, and has given us permission. Um, we are accountable for what come in and out of our gates. We are accountable um, to everything that God gives us. Um, we're held responsible for everything God um, places into our hands, especially as um, as apostolic leaders, as um, prophetic leaders. And, you know, and so, um, like I said, just coming on and just sharing this particular area because I really feel like it really needs to be shared um, because we don't talk about it enough. And I thank you all for coming on today. And and I thank you even for you um, coming on this after the replay that's going to be watching the replay. Thank you for coming on as well. And just just sitting back and just taking in what uh, what the Lord is really saying and what he's been saying. But um, just sharing a little bit. Um, I, if some of you don't know me or you've never been on any of my lives. My name is um, Apostle Jonelle Maxwell and I am the um, I am the founder of. Um, New Day Apostolic Global Network here in Sacramento, California. So it is pretty sunny today as usual. So I just wanted to come out and kind of just share a little bit what was on my heart. So I'm just going to go ahead and get into it. I'm not going to prolong, not going to hold you long. But um, I remember some years ago uh, when the Lord began to bring me into this place. Um, didn't quite understand it at the time, but you know, you know how the Lord pretty much how he teaches us along the way in our beginning walk with him. And we really watch to see how he um, give us line upon line, precept upon precept. And so over the years at the, at the very beginning of my walk with the Lord, I remember the Lord. Uh, one day I was getting off of work and I was still at that time. I was still living in Virginia and I was getting off of work and I just wanted to have um just a little bit of, you know, quality time for myself. And so what I did, I ended up going out and getting some, um, some therapeutic cream, some therapy cream from Bath and Body Works. So I want you to hang on here. I want you to hear this. So I, I went to Bath and Body Works, got some, um, some cream and everything for, uh, from Bath and Body Works. And so when I, uh, when I got home, I noticed, um, a shift. As soon as I uh, brought the product into my home, I noticed how something in the atmosphere shifted. And so I asked the Lord, I said, okay, Lord, 
And I kind of, it kind of went over my head a little bit. I, I really didn't zoom in on it of what it was because the Lord was really teaching me at that time. He was really training me of how to understand certain things in the spirit. He was, he was teaching me and training me in the area of spiritual warfare. And so, um, I remember, uh, when I, when I went past the door, my doorpost, you know, and I felt this shifting. And, um, later on that night when I went to, um, to, to take a bath in that oil, um, when I went to bed, I remember having this dream about, um, I was on this train. I never forget it to this day. And it was at least about 20 years ago. And so I remember being on this train and, um, and the train was really, was going extremely fast. And then the dream was very dark. And all I could see on the dream in the dream was just, um, dead people. They was all deceased. And I was like, wow. So when I woke up out of my dream, I asked the Holy Spirit, what was that? And immediately, when I told, when I said that, um, what flashed before me was that product that I brought into my home. And so, of course, it was like four o'clock that morning. I'll never forget four o'clock that morning. And it was raining that morning. And I got up, got dressed, and I threw, it was at least about, that, that product was at least about $30 worth. And I threw the whole, um, the whole product away. I just got rid of it. And so from that point, it's like God really began to uh, reveal a lot to me about spiritual warfare. He began to um, reveal a lot to me about how to protect my gates, um, not just uh, my eye gate. Because, you know, we talk about gears, um, different areas of talking about gates. You know, you have your eye gate, you have your ear gate. You know, we have different areas of our gates. But then um, we also have the gates of our home of how we have to protect that which we allow to come into our home because there are certain things that have demonic spirits attached to um, to the things that we bring in our home and things that we receive from other people. And so a lot of times what we have to do, we have to. We have to ask the Holy Spirit, even when someone give us something, we have to ask the Holy Spirit, you know, if there's a check in our spirit of of. of throwing it away we have to throw it away we have to not receive everything everything that we get you know does not come from the lord and you know everything is not you know a good and perfect gift and so, so we have to really govern that particular area and saying okay if it's not, if we get that check in, in our spirit from the holy spirit he lets us know hey you know you don't 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 receive that you know so there are times in my own um life where you know people would give me jewelry people would give me um different books they would you know just different clothing or something like that and i would not receive it i would throw it away and there are even times where there are times i will even go through my own home and just see if there's anything that the lord want me to throw away and this was like when i first accepted the lord as my savior as you know as my personal savior it was like the lord would begin to take me through these different areas of um of cleansing and and as he began as he was purifying my life there was a lot of things i was throwing away because you know there was things that i had before i was saved there was things that um clothing that i wore before i say i was saved and those things you know the lord began to convict me in those particular areas and um to get rid of those those different clothing and i believe that once we grow in christ you know um, that conviction, those convictions come and, and those things that we once did or those things that we, those things that we was once involved in or those things that we once wore, you know, we don't, we don't wear them anymore. We don't go to those places anymore. And, and, you know, because I was really one that, you know, I remember, you know, I was, I was one of those that, um, that I, I love going out. I was a clubber, you know, I went to the, you know, if I won't at the club, you know, I was at the, you know, I was at least at a, at a, at a bar, you know? So, you know, once I received the Lord as my, as my savior, those places I didn't go to anymore. I felt convicted if I walked in those, in those different areas. But of course, you know, everybody else have they whatever conviction that they have, the nest on them. But I know what the Lord has convicted me in over the years because he has taken me through the area area of of that cleansing process and god yet continue to take us through those areas of of cleansing you know there's no um there's no one time deliverance i can never we can never say that we know that um according to scripture you know sanctification is a continual you know sanctification don't you know don't 
just begin and end at the beginning of your Christian walk. But we continue to go through periods of sanctification. Even when God began to elevate us in certain areas of ministry, we begin to go into different levels of, levels of, of um a purification even in that so we can walk into a greater vein in him and in a and walk into a greater um area of purity and clarity even in him and so when i talk about governing the gates when i talk about um um being a a, a gatekeeper over our city and over our region and over the things that God has given us, then he has, he holds us responsible of those things. And so when we allow certain things to even, even as being apostolic being, we have been given, we have been given the mandate over our rule, over what God has given us to rule over, you know, and it is up to us to intercede for our city. It's up to us to intercede for our region you know, and I'm going, I'm going somewhere with this because you know, one, one thing that it begins with, it begins with us as individuals. And so when God began to take us in these different areas of cleansing and purification, you know, it just doesn't end in our own individual life, even though it starts in our individual life. It does not end in our individual life because we become, um, we become a keeper even of our relationships that we come into covenant with. Uh, we have to even be sure, even in those areas that when God is bringing us into covenant with one another, we we don't understand that we take on what we come into agreement with. We take on what we come into covenant with. And so when we, um, when we fellowship with darkness, you know, when we, when we come into fellowship and relation with darkness, that we become what we in fellowship and relationship in it just like for instance um even when you're when you're dating or or you know back in the day when you used to date or whatever and you was with that one <laughs> you were with that man and you know you start as a woman and we don't just go into this because as a woman you begin to you know as you get more and more involved in 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 that person or that person get more and more involved in you you start to notice that you start to take on their mannerisms they start to take on your mannerism that's because we're be, you're becoming one with that person as you are involved with that person as you intimately involved with that person you become intimate then what end up happening is that you become in agreement we become in agreement. And so when we come into covenant, we have to, you know, we have to ask the Holy Spirit, even when we begin to come into relationship with others, you know, we have to ask the Holy Spirit, God, is this an individual that you want me to come into a relationship with? Because even in the spirit realm and different um, areas of ministry, the attacks that that ministry is getting, you will also be receiving that those same attacks as well. And so we have to be careful in what we call ourselves coming into covenant with, coming into agreement with. And for my own self, you know, I've always been careful with that. I've always been watchful in particular areas, you know, because I don't I don't do unnecessary warfare. <laughs> You know, I just don't get, I don't get into unnecessary warfare. I won't, I won't No, I will ask the Holy Spirit, even when it comes down to praying about something and someone contact me and say, Hey, can you pray about such, such, such before I even get involved in that prayer? I ask the Holy Spirit, is this something that you want me to involve myself in? Cause a lot of times we end up happening. We end up bringing our own self into different areas of unnecessary warfare because we take on responsibility of what somebody else then got in. Usually it's what somebody else <laughs> have gotten itself into, you know. And of course, you know, there's mercy. You know, of course, God is the God of mercy, you know. But we're not talking about that area right now. <laughs> we're not talking about that area right now. But there are times where we even have to be careful, even in our intercession, you know, um, because we can even be taking on false responsibility, even in our intercession, you know. Um, we have to, you know, we cannot, we cannot continue to entangle ourselves in things that the Lord does not want to, want us to entangle ourselves in, you know, and a lot of times what end up happening is, you know, we cannot go on or move further in the things of the Lord because we are entangled in somebody else's bondage. We have to ask the Holy Spirit, you know, to break those different areas, even off of our out of our 
own life so that we can be more and more effective. And even, you know, even with the scripture that talks about, you know, in John 15, we talk about bear where, um, let's go there. I'm gonna go there real quick. I'm gonna go there really quick. There's John. Uh, let's see. I'm going to go to, I think I'm just going to, I'm going to start the 15th chapter and I'm just going to start the first verse and then I'm going to come down to the area that I want to expound on. Um, let's see. Okay. This is actually the new King James. This scripture I have on me at this time. But anyway, um, John 15, I'm starting in the first verse and it says, I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you about in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, and we know the word abides means to live, to continually live in him. And I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burnt. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you can ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. So, you know, the area that I do want to expound on is how the Lord really, how he takes us and how he prunes those areas that does not um, bring forth fruit. Those areas that have to be taken away, those areas in us that has to be burned away. Because what really happens also is that if God doesn't do that internal work, that he prunes away those particular areas, then those areas, we would not be able to be effective so we can be able to bear more fruit in him. So those areas of darkness, those areas that um, those areas that we need to you know allow the Lord to break from out of our life those those areas that we may have fellowship with darkness God has to break us out break those things out of us so that we can be able to produce more fruit amen so you know um, in order for us to truly be effective in the in what God has called us to be, we have to allow Him to do that internal work on the inside of us, you know. And uh, you know, just sitting back and just watching, you know, a lot of things that we ourselves have allowed to even come into our own city, you know, our own region. And that's why I talk about governing because it's up to us, you know, to. Um, it's up to us to make sure that we guard our gates. It's up to us to make sure that we guard um, that we guard our city, that we guard our region, you know, especially as apostolic leaders. You know, it's up to us to make sure those things that that tries to come into our city, you know, that try to we have to guard against things coming in, into our city, even though there's things that's already in our city. It is up to us to uproot those things through prayer, through intercession. It is up to us to to be able to say, you know, that does not belong in my city. Those things would never belong, you know. Um, we we cannot stay in my city, you know. That even with when it comes to the crime rate rate in our cities, when it comes to those things that we find out that's that's lurking in our cities, in order for us to come out against those things, we have to be able to say, God, I don't want that in my life. Let's just say, for instance, and I always use this as an example. Bless you, thank you for coming on. Um, I always use this as an example. I always say, um, I use perversion. Because if we're not, if perversion is lurking in our own hearts, if perversion is lurking in our own lives, then we are unable to break that system. We are unable to pray against that system. Those are things that the Lord is saying, okay, I need for those things not to, to, not to be in your life in order for you to be able to, um, through him, to be able to break those systems, to be able to break those things and to come out against those things that, that tries to come out against our cities, that try to come out against our region, um, those things that come out against, try to come out against our ministry. We cannot continue to stand back.
back and allow these things to happen. But going back to it being is being us first. It always comes back to us as individuals and allowing the Holy Spirit, you know, to do that internal work within us. That's why at the beginning of the live, I started with myself and I started how the Lord began to take me over the years of spiritual warfare and you know, and how he began to reveal to me then of being careful in what I brought into my home, what I what I picked up from, you know, from other people and just coming away from those things through sanctification, allow him to purge those areas in my own life so that when it comes to the time for me to war, you know, in prayer against certain things that that's in my city or war against those things that's in my region or those things um, that comes out against my covenant relationships. I can't war against them if I'm all if I'm all entangled up in the things of darkness. And like I said, those things that we don't talk about, we don't communicate those areas. But it, because it takes us to have to really submit ourselves to the, to the Holy Spirit. And everybody don't want to submit themselves to the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Everyone don't want to, you know, submit themselves to the Holy Spirit. Because that's when the Lord truly becomes Lord. <laughs> you know, and we know that we're not own. You know, we were bought with a price. And the Lord holds us accountable, especially as leaders. God holds us accountable for what goes on in our region. God holds us accountable for what goes on in our cities. He holds us accountable what happens in our in our relationship with um, our covenant relationships with one another um, in our marriages. God holds us accountable because he holds, you know, he entrusts those things in our hands, you know, he has given us the power, you know, to, um, to govern, you know, he has given us the anointing to govern, you know, and we have to do, of course, we do it through him, but we cannot, we cannot continue to say, I'm going to do this thing my own way. And we cannot, is 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 God's way. That's that's the only way that we're going to be able to do things and, and how we're going to really, truly be effective is when we go God's way and, and his way is right. His way is pure. His way is holy, you know, and God really has been speaking. Like I said, this is an area that I really I really have expounded in and over the years. Um, I really the Lord has really taught me in my own personal life. That's why there's certain things I don't receive. Uh, we even have the other area we have to also be careful in and making sure, you know, making sure we don't ask everybody for prayer. That's something that we always we always have done. You know, I don't know about, about anyone else, but, you know, we've always done that. We're quick to tell people pray for me especially over social media, be careful with asking just anybody to pray for you. Bless you, Apostle Hill. Thank you for coming on. And, you know, and, um, um, you know, those particular areas, you know, we have to be careful and, you know, you can't ask everybody to pray for you. Bless you, Apostle Abby. Thank you for coming on, you know, and we have to be careful in our walk with the Lord, our walk with the Lord is precious, you know, it's precious. And so sometimes we have, we have, um, going back to having unnecessary warfare, you know, and being careful in those areas. I remember, I even remember, um, times where people have prayed for me and I've seen the unwanted results. <laughs> you know, I've seen the unwanted results. Like, hold on, wait a minute. You know, and so there are times where I had to uproot a prayer. You know, and um, and it, and sometimes it opens up the door to deception, opens up the door to control, um, and manipulation. You know, so you have to be careful in who you you allow someone access and permission. You know, to pray in those areas of of when even when it comes to prayer. You know, because everyone doesn't have you know sad to say but it's true but you know everyone doesn't have your best interest at heart their their heart is not um is not rooted in love you know their heart is not truly rooted in love and and there are times where people do 
desire for you to fail and for you to fall. And so you have to really guard your 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 walk. You know, we have to guard our walk. We have to guard our prayer our prayer life. Um, never give anyone any don't never give anyone full responsibility over your prayer life. <laughs> you know, and I understand there are times in our life where we are where you may go through those dry seasons and you may say, I need someone to pray for me. That's when you need to have people that you truly trust, you know, to really intercede on your behalf when you're going through those things in your life to truly keep you guarded, to truly keep you protected. Um, because we all go through it. We all go through periods, you know, where, you know, the Lord is, is leading us in a different direction and we need those, we need that counsel. We need, um, we may need counsel. We may need, um, those that to pour into our life and everything, but still at the same time, never hold anyone responsible for your prayer life. Your prayer life belongs to you. Your prayer life belongs to you. And so I really hold that area extremely uh, valuable. You know, my relationship with the Lord belongs to me, <laughs> you know? And so, um, so just coming on and just sharing those particular areas about governing, you know, governing your gates, you know, it's just not when it comes to even though I talked about, you know, the city, govern our cities and govern our um, region and govern just the, the nation as a whole, as the people of God, we you know, we have to get back to the place of what to allow and what not to allow in our, in our city, you know, what to allow and what not to allow in our gates of our nation you know, and how to intercede for our nation, you know, and we have to just go, we got to go deeper. We have to go deeper in prayer. We have to go deeper in intercession because there are things that we do not see. You know, we cannot see in the natural, in the natural, uh, with the natural eye. And so we have to go deep in prayer in order for us to truly see, truly see what the Lord is revealing to us. And, you know, one thing about walking in the prophetic is that you have to be able to have eyes to see, you know, you have to be able to have eyes to see and without prayer, without, um, the intercession, then we can't, we can't see afar off what the Lord wants to reveal, um, to us as far as even with this nation. So let's just continue to, um, Continue to pray, continue to watch our gates, continue to uh, allow the Holy Spirit to, to keep us responsible. We have to remain accountable. Uh, we are accountable to one another. We, we have a job to do. We have a task to do in this hour, and we cannot continue to allow things to just to continue to happen. So the Lord is holding us responsible. He's holding us accountable. And um, if I haven't read any of your comments, I'm going to go back and read it after I get off the live. You know, I try to stay on my focus, everything. <laughs> you know, I try to stay a little bit focused. But um, just wanted to come on because I really believe the Lord is leading us into a deeper place, a much greater place in him. And um, we are called to sound the alarm, you know. But if we don't know what the alarm is, how can we sound it? And so, um, thank you for coming on. Thank you for chiming in on today. And, you know, we have to make sure that we do not have, and we don't have any fellowship with darkness because God calls us. He tells us, he said, come out from amongst them and be separated. So, you know, we have to walk in, we got to walk in purity, you know, out. And, you know, my other saying is there's power in purity. There's definitely power and walking in purity with the Lord, you know, Hey sissy. And so, um, you know, we have to do that. We have to, you know, just stay before the Lord, allow him to do that internal work in us. And it doesn't always feel good. You know, when, God, when God does is doing the work and he uprooting certain things out of our life, it doesn't always feel good, you know? And, um, I can't say that, you know, everything feels good because it doesn't. And so we have to, you know, um, uh, bless you, my brother, for coming on, Brother Smith. That's my brother, y'all. And, um, you know, so we have to, you know, really um, allow the Lord to uproot things out of our own hearts so that we can be more and more effective in the kingdom. So I'm looking forward to seeing what God is going to do and what he is yet doing. I'm excited about what the Lord 
is doing in all of our lives. And, you know, it, it takes it takes submission, it takes submitting to the Holy Spirit and allowing him to do the internal work. Amen. So have a marvelous day until we meet again. And I don't know when I'll come back on again. I will let you know and have a great day. And once again, if you've never been on before, uh, my name is Jonelle Maxwell, and I am the apostle of New Day Apostolic Global Network. And have a marvelous day. Blessings.